Call the town council meeting of October 16th to order, please. Stand with me and owning America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilor Roy. Here. Councilor Holbrook. Here. Councilor St. Clair. Here. Councilor Blaze. Here. Councilor Benedict. Here. Chairman Alquist. Here. Item four is general public comments. This is your opportunity to stand up and give your name and address, and you can speak about anything you want for three minutes. And if you go over, you'll hear the little ding dong. No problem. And that means you're off. I just paid my Martin trip, 26 Oceanwood. I just paid my taxes. I'm worried about future increases. I, I looked at the computer, and I don't see where the Wentworth School two million dollars a year is being paid yet. I think that's got to be baked in the cake coming up pretty quick. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think so. Uh, the Scarborough Land Trust, they're going to want a bond because they've run out of money. I think it's funded through the town. The police station is going to want a bonding, and that's going to come up. Right now the town is 82 million dollars in debt. That by the computer and what I could figure out. One where school is going to add $60 million to the debt, or $2 million per year over 30 years. That, that's what I get for my cost of this project. Uh, going against the current amount that we pay in taxes, if you add $2 million a year over it, I don't know, 2 2.5% when we start paying this off, if we're not already, and I'm not sure about that, but I'm very concerned about this proposition. The dog settlement, and this is the only point of the dog settlement I'm going to do, we would have had to pay a $12,000 fine. But in the negotiations, we end up with a 20-hour week for an individual for five years. That calculates the 5,000 hours for a part-time person now, even if you only pay the part-time person 10 bucks an hour, you're going to expend $50,000 a year on a part-time person for this settlement. I, I don't understand it. I'd rather pay the $12,000 fine and promised I'd do better. Uh, the expanded beach patrol, I guess that was coming. The signage in the brochures, that's going to be pretty expensive. I, I don't know. All right, the first thing out is people start talking about dog parks because they can't use the beach. I don't know what a dog park's going to cost. Come on, under a couple hundred thousand dollars for a dog park by the time you... I don't care. Please. 110? Excuse me. But I don't care. That's a thousand dollar signs in town, aluminum cast, aluminum signs in town to spend the money on. Eight stone pillars down at the end of Hages Parkway that do nothing but sit there. You gotta consider the taxpayer. You're, you're beating us up something terrible. When I first came to my first council meeting, I was told, well, this is the way we do things in town. And the next one was, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And my favorite is, we didn't think of that. <laughs> it's not that funny. It's, it's got to stop. You can't keep this. The threshold of pain is there. You're not making good decisions. You can't keep saying, as a town, that we're going to continue to do A, B, and C because you just can't do it. That's my three minutes. I've got another meeting to go to. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Tripp. Who's next? Three minutes. Name and address. Joanne Mahoney, 18 Pillsbury. Good evening, Council. What I have seen in the last two weeks is a remarkable effort and response by the collection of over 2,700 signatures of your constituents who do not agree on what and how the amendments were passed on October 2nd by this council. <coughs> Unless we go back to the original ordinances, please do not reconsider. To reconsider is only an avenue to circumvent the efforts of the people that have spoken in this town. 
<coughs> who have put their signatures on the petitions, and now we want the opportunity to vote on the leash ordinances. Any reconsideration that is not back to the original ordinances and effect a change will make the collected signatures today void. Totally disrespects the voice of over 2,700 constituents of this town. The people of the town are addressing the council via their signatures loud and clear. 2,700 strong. We are no longer a few. We are many. We ask this council now to respect and represent the 2,700 plus that each that you were elected by each of you. And we still ask tonight, please work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address. Hi, name Carolyn it. Brodsky, 14 Mast Road. Um, I'm also going to speak to the dog issue. And I'm also going to ask you not to reconsider your last changes to the original ordinance. And instead, to allow the people of Scarborough to vote on this. The way in which the council chose to deal with this and essentially pay no mind to the citizen is a huge concern. Should you reconsider this, you could change this again in, a way, in any way you wanted, still not heeding to the almost 33,000 people who signed our petition. The old ordinance was fair and balanced for all users of the beach. It appears that you allowed your hand to be forced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife as well. You know by now that the data on the plovers and dogs <laughs> is non-existent, except for one verified death in 10 years. Now, through your negotiated agreement, the consent agreement, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is asking the town to not only collect the data, but to also pay for the person collecting it. So not only did, did they not have the data to demand the change, they want us to collect it. Uh, I, that makes no sense to me. We elected you to spend our tax dollars wisely. This is stupid. We taxpayers are paying the Fed taxes for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, and now the town, tax, the, now the town will tax us to pay for a plover coordinator. That's, um, that is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife job. We, need, we don't need to pay twice to enforce a federal environmental law. Because dog owners who, don't control, who didn't control their dogs, and they can be a problem for people who don't like dogs um, to approach them or their children, the town put in place an ordinance to address that several years ago. And that ordinance was working. Scarborough and Crescent Beach are dog-free all summer long, as is Western Beach during the plover season. Dog owners under the old ordinance had only between 6 and 9 a.m. during the summer months to be off lead. That's it. If their dogs like to swim, that's the only time they could do it off lead. The beach owners had between 9 and 5 no dogs, and then after 5, they were on lead. We can live with that. But being relegated to only being um, allowed on the beach with an eight-foot lead is not fair. And those who pay the taxes here deserve better. I ask you not to reconsider and let us go to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address, three minutes. Hi, my name is Beth Doran. I live on One Schooner Road. I agree, I agree with the last speakers. If we re you respect the citizens initiative process, then you will agree that the voters should decide whether the old ordinance was already balanced. I believe it was already a compromise reached in 2004 where dog owners accepted reasonable restrictions. Do not allow federal agency to determine local policy when those agencies do not have any data on dogs and plovers to support their claims. There is no data that says that leashing dogs will help the plovers. It's all speculative. You have said recently you would increase enforcement. So increase enforcement, give out fines, and educate. Use the money you are considering to hire a plover coordinator and educate and enforce for far less. It is the irresponsible dog owners that you are trying to legislate for, but you cannot legislate social behavior. Bad dog owners will continue to be bad and you will only be punishing the responsible folks. You've already listened to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Now listen to the people who signed this petition and the people who vote for you. 
please don't rec reconsider this ordinance unless it is to return to the reasonable restrictions we already had in place. Let the citizens' voice be heard and let the political process play out. Thank you. Next. Name and address. Three minutes. My name is Pamela Rovner. I live at 4 King Street, Scarborough. I want to reemphasize a few things. We already had a balanced compromise. 12% of the summer hours and beaches for other people and plovers. Very little else is acceptable. Reconsidering it at this point does not change the fact that we already had balance. Leashing dogs on the beach after Labor Day is ridiculous. Taking away dog owners' rights to pursue what they consider to be pleasure while exercising themselves and their dogs is simply crazy. As the last person said, other people have other alternatives. The eight-foot leash is also crazy. Dogs like to swim, and people like to swim with them. Let the voters decide if dogs should be allowed off-leash on beaches during the winter and for 12% of the time during the summer. Don't let the Fish and Wildlife tell Scarborough how to run its own beaches. Everybody needs to learn how to share Scarborough. Every type of user should get to have opportunities to enjoy this awesome resource. Off-leash dogs provide happiness to many people, some of who aren't even dog owners, but love to watch them fetch, swim, and play with each other. Children love to see them swimming. Can't we just share the resources? Can't we just share Scarborough? And I do not think that it's important to spend the tax dollars to make dog parks when they're not necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Name, address, three minutes, please. Yep. Uh, my name is Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, those are words that I very much try to live by. Um, but mostly, um, I've learned a lot in this process. And one of the things that has struck me most is, is this idea of dialogue. People have said, well, you guys have been talking about this for six to eight weeks. Unfortunately, dialogue for me is an open exchange of ideas back and forth. It provides opportunity for one to ask clarifying questions, to offer differing points of view that may be considered, and that is reciprocated. I suggest we have not had opportunity to engage in true dialogue. Speaking at you for three minutes when one is nervous or rushed is not dialogue. Email is not dialogue. In fact, I think it is downright dangerous. We have all made mistakes in this process, including myself. Let's change that. Let's learn from it. And let's stop putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. As you can imagine, we've heard all kinds of stories this week. Um, on, and all of those stories are valid, and I respect all of the opinions, even those who don't believe that dogs should be on the beach in the summer. But what we had in place was a very well-balanced ordinance. Let's stick with what we had. Put out public notice. The awareness is now heightened to an all-time high. Rather, uh, let people know warnings will be fined the very first time, period. Educate and enforce. Tell the feds that this is our town, not theirs. Please don't tie our hands with them. The only thing I haven't shared with you to date is my own story about dogs, and I think it's important that you hear that. In the past 11 years, I lost my, a partner, my dog, two dogs, my house, one cat, my brother, my father, and two of my very best friends under the age of 40 to cancer. The kind of compounded grief and loss bears a heavy toll on one's heart and soul. One of the absolute greatest pleasures and without a doubt the best friends I had in those times were my dogs. The thing that consoles my heart and restores my soul faster than anything else is a walk on the beach with my dog. My lab, Parker Wilson Brown, who isn't with us anymore, uh, went through all of this with me. He soaked up those tears at night. He offered a never-ending plethora of doggy kisses. He has since passed away, but I swear he's reincarnated in my new little girl, Darlin' Hermione Foley Dorenzo. <laughs> yes, I give my dog multiple names. I think that tells a story. Um, she's a Border Collie mix, and I swear if you came to the beach with me, you would actually see her smile. Um, there's now talk of a reconsideration vote. You have a tough job. I've said it before, um, and I do thank you. I thank you for your service. It's a tough job. Um, but the facts haven't changed. The data hasn't changed. 
You guys had all the information. You made a decision. You voted on it. It passed. I, I have to trust that you made the decision you thought was best for this town. I think the town disagrees, as is evidenced by the 2,754 signatures. Please let them vote. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Uh, Elaine Richer, 5 Reef Lane, 28 East Grand. I know you all work hard to do the best for this town. You dedicate your time and energy with every, very little thanks. You research the facts before you vote. This issue was different. It had facts, but it had emotion and drama. First, you had the piping plover, which selects a nesting area in which the bird has little chance to, for survival between the weather and the predators. Then you have the dogs, the token predators. As long as the issue of dogs was on the table, you considered all the unruly dogs of Scarborough, which are a small percentage. The third element was the federal government, which is drama personified. This three-ring circus confused the process. As Councilor Alquist was quoted as saying, I think we went too far in all the confusion. This is probably not the time to make a final decision. And so the process. At the previous two meetings I attended, the council was very diligent in reminding people when they were off topic. It occurred to me after the last meeting that we were all off topic every time we spoke. We were speaking to a proposed ordinance that was never ever going to be proposed. It would have been appreciated, it would have been fair, and in a democratic spirit to know this. When you decided to put the dog leash ordinance on hold, one of you could have mentioned to us that there was a change in the ordinance to be proposed. Then there were the comments after the vote that this vote was about creating a discussion about dog parks. There's a wise saying that about not putting the cart before the horse. Using this analogy, if your intent was to create dog parks, why create a leash law and then begin discussions about dog parks which take months or years to develop and thousands and thousands of dollars to develop? What was created by this law was havoc. The next day after the vote, all over Scarborough, people were breaking the law. Some, were, some knew it and some didn't. Within the next few days, all of them were scrambling around trying to figure out, what am I going to do? Where am I going to let my dog run? A petition that has been circulating because the process was compromised and the process had an outcome that was flawed. As the ordinance stands, if I were to walk a dog in Memorial Park today, October 15th, I could have a 30-foot leash. And if I were to walk a dog on Pine Point Beach, I could have no more than an 8-foot leash. Is that because dogs in parks don't jump and bite as much as they do when they're on the beach? And if you reconsider and still ban unleashed dogs from April to October on beaches, where do the dogs go to run then? You can't dismiss this as not your problem when you create it. So how do we make this right? We go back to the original. And then we get together and we have dialogue. And that's not by having us stand here and speak and you listen and say nothing, but actually having a dialogue and coming up with other thoughts on how to protect the piping plover and protect people in general. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Name and address, please. Thank you. My name is Julie Hannon. and I live on Mast Road. Uh, first, I'd like to start by complimenting Councilor Roy, Councilor Holbrook, and Councillor St. Clair, specifically Councillor St. Clair for her candid remarks on, at our last meeting when she said she felt like we were being forced. We feel like we are being forced. We are being forced to, to accept an ordinance that makes no sense at all to dog owners. We don't want a dog park. Actually, I don't want to speak for everyone. I don't want a dog park. It's not the kind of place where my dog can run. It's not, they're actually not very healthy. And if you look at the ASP, A, ASPCA, they will say to you, they're not very healthy. And they cost a lot of money. You don't just build a small little area for dogs to run. Beaches are somewhere where a dog can run and go into the water and swim. I mean, imagine this. You got eight feet. How is a dog, go I mean, I, you know, I know it's humorous. But I mean, I mean, come on, let's be real about this. This is a beach. It's an open beach area. We are not, we are not being unrealistic here. We get that some people don't like dogs on the beach. We get that there's plovers on the beaches. We get that. Work with us. Let us come up with a reasonable solution for this. 
Don't sit there and make the decision when you're not sitting and consulting the people that go to the beaches every single morning and run their dogs. I know you've had conversations with them, but to sit and negotiate a reasonable alternative, we are not about running when the plovers are there. We're not about that. We're about protecting them. But please, don't take away the only place in Scarborough where our dogs can go for a swim. You cannot swim with a dog on an eight-foot leash. Now, I have a dog that's this high. He can't swim, period. But he cannot walk in the woods. He cannot walk on Eastern Trail, if that's what you're suggesting. Why? Because he's got all of his parts, and he's a Scottish Terrier, and if he sees a squirrel, he's gone. And he's now in Cape Elizabeth. But for some reason on the beach, we don't have little squirrels running around. So what does he do? He chases the boats in the water. This is what he does. Be reasonable, please. I beg you to listen to your citizens. <coughs> I beg you to listen to them and have a dialogue with them because we are willing to communicate with you. We are willing to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Oh, thank you. Name and address, please. Three minutes. Amy Dranzo, 3 Lucky Lanes, Scarborough. It is really quite amazing to think about how two animals could have possibly caused what has taken place in this town over the past three months. To think that the death of a bird that blends in with the sand and can be found walking across the beach in the middle of the summer, a bird that could have just as easily been stepped on by a child or tourist instead of falling victim to Fido, could have turned an entire town upside down, it's just really mind-boggling. As a result, not just Fido will pay the price, but also local dog owners, vacationers, and good folks from neighboring towns who like to walk our beaches and frequent our local businesses. The taxpayers will also pay the price because the feds want us to commit to employing someone for a full five years to stand guard over these birds, which could be a really sweet babysitting job. I am personally all for job creation, but come on. In addition to demanding that the town still pay a negotiated reduced fine, the feds also want to take away the power of the town by inserting a nice little threat that if the town doesn't like their conditions, that they can still stick it to us by giving us the larger fine. So this little bird's death, the first confirmed and second suspected of its kind in over a decade, due to the alleged actions of Fido, has impacted Scarborough in ways the general public and even the council may not fully understand. The death of this solitary bird has threatened a way of life. I have heard stories from a number of people who have lived in this town for over 50 years and have walked their dogs on the beach every single day for the past five decades. And before them, their parents did the same. There are seniors who go to the beach because they are not physically able to give their dogs the exercise they need without being able to allow them to run free. They are simply too frail to go out on a long, a long leashed walk. I've also heard of a very practical issue in which someone owns a poodle-sized dog and they happen to be over six feet tall. The council's eight-foot leash restriction, given that almost four feet of it is used from hand to ground, means that this poor dog will likely become as vulnerable as a plover to its own owner's feet. And God forbid the owner has to scratch his head, the poor thing could get hung. <laughs> I, f I find it hard to believe that with all that is going on in this world, we would allow something like a dog killing a bird to cost us thousands of dollars in legal fees and thousands of hours of labor, and all because the council thought that their opinion mattered more than the town's. We asked to form a committee. We asked for compromise. We asked to be heard, and we were told no. The council told us that they were acting on the behalf of a silent majority who felt dogs should be banned. I ask that you allow that democratic process to work and allow your silent majority to have their voices be heard at the polls. In the meantime, we have signatures of over 2,700 residents, a not-so-silent majority, who would like the chance to vote. Perhaps for fear that the real majority in Scarborough does not share their personal view, I fear some members of this council are now attempting to push through a reconsideration in order to silence the public to nullify the people's petition and strip them of their democratic due process. At our last meeting, I spoke about the government shutdown and how people were being bullied and held hostage to politics and how I felt Scarborough could do better. It disappoints me to know and to think that I was wrong, and I hope that you will honor the people's petition in this matter out of respect for the people of Scarborough. Thank you. Next. Name and address, please. Charmy Kivatiski, 386 Black Point Road, Scarborough. 
Well, I guess uh, I'm going to be the fly in the ointment, and uh, people will view me as being against mom and apple pie and dogs. I'm not against dogs. I've had dogs in my life when my children were young. But I think I'm going to be speaking for the rest, rest of the Scarborough population who want to enjoy beaches, parks, without concern or fear of being annoyed or indeed assaulted by dogs in our personal spaces. Uh, because when someone jumps on you and puts his or her nose where it doesn't belong, that is considered an assault. It would be if it was a human being doing it to you. But I would like to enjoy, as many other people would, my walks on beaches, parks, or wherever public space there is without looking over my shoulder or listening for the jingling of dog collars. In other words, without fear. I want to go and just be one with nature, if you will, without looking around and seeing who's going to be running up to me, albeit in a friendly manner, I, I personally would just like to just be by myself and doing my walk. Now, um, and yes, yeah, somebody mentioned that there, was, uh, there are other places to go to have your walk. Scarborough Beach charges a $10 fee. I don't want to have to pay for a nice walk on the beach. And uh, for people who don't like dogs, not all of us who want to go and enjoy walking in public spaces don't not we don't necessarily do not like dogs we do like dogs but sometimes we just want to go and not be accosted by a free running dog it's common sense now there are 2250 registered dogs in Scarborough and even allowing for two owners per household that is 4500 dog owners the population of Scarborough is 16970 so that's about, dog owners are about one quarter of the total population. Okay, what about the rest of us? We would like to enjoy recreating on beaches and parks and public spaces without the fear of, of, of dogs uh, interrupting our, our being on, in public spaces. And Lastly, dog owners are not being banned from the beaches and public spaces. They just need to be more responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Name and address, three minutes. Good evening. Eddie Wooden, 34 Clearwater Drive. I want to thank the town council for your vote two weeks ago that uh, created an April 1 start date for the protection of the piping plovers. I applaud that. Um, I'm here to discuss the leash law. Um, it was a bit of a curveball uh, two weeks ago, uh, but I'm very much in favor of it. Uh, two discussions, a leash law in town, and then a discussion of the leash law uh, at the beaches with the dogs. We're a progressive town. We're a large town. And it's time to have dogs and a leash law, as many cities do, and many towns in Maine do, and many of the towns that I have lived in. Let me give you an incident. Uh, I'm an instance. I'm concerned about dogs, dog bites, and uh, their threat to people. We had a Citizens for Green Scarborough meeting three weeks ago. One of our members, we were discussing dogs, and she said, well, you know, I was out jogging with my dog and a Rottweiler came up behind us and kept getting closer and closer and I was very concerned for our safety. And there was no uh, bite or incident, so she called the police department. And they said, well, w was there a bite? No. And they said, well, we don't have a leash law, so we really don't have jurisdiction over this. Uh, months later, this dog bit a teenage boy and the, and the dog was put down. So having this as an example, uh, I made a phone call to the police department to look for statistics in terms of reports of dogs uh, and, and phone calls, incidents. Uh, and in the previous year, up until this date, there have been over 30 phone calls to the police department. And it's a combination of phone calls, that uncomfortable harassment, but there have been a handful of bites in addition to. 
And I think you, uh, the, the public should consider that as an important issue, uh, should respect it, and uh, thank you for creating the leash law itself. Now, in, in terms of the beach, maybe there's some common ground. Uh, uh, I, I think as uh, town manager, Mr. Hall, indicated with this um, list, uh, there will be, uh, until the vote in January, uh, a moratorium, and perhaps it should be a moratorium until springtime before the plovers come back. And within that time, discuss dog parks, which I suggested initially I'm very much in favor of. Um, dog parks, uh, there are some well-managed, respect please, if you don't mind. Is that all right? Uh, dog parks uh, are, are used effectively, City of Portland, et cetera. Uh, so I think that should be explored. Um, and then a perhaps a forum and discussion uh, of dogs may be off leash during the winter hours. But thank you for your leadership. Thank you. A uh, uh, public comment session is, uh, goes for 30 minutes according to council rules. I, I, I'd like to have everybody speak, so if you can make it uh, step right up so we as can quickly get as to I the can. list. you got three minutes. Democracy is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, ruled by majority vote. The 2012 Maine Audubon Report on the Plover specifically states that dogs have had no discernible impact on the Plover population and their own data concludes that dogs are a statistical insignificant threat to the plover population. Let me state this as plainly and simply as I can. Dogs do not pose any discernible threat to the survival of the plover on the Scarborough beaches, and any rhetoric that states otherwise is ignoring every single factual piece of data we have. Now, while the death of this plover is regrettable, the fact is that that death is statistically insignificant to the plover population. That's a fact. So let's dispense with this notion that this has anything to do with the plovers, because that's intellectually insulting. Let's address the real agenda at play here, and that is that all dogs are to be leashed year-round, and no dogs are to be allowed on the beaches at any time. That was what was put in front of us, and that's why we are here today. This is not now, nor has it ever been, anything other than a single-minded crusade by a select few to impose their will on the electorate. And the plover simply presented a convenient vehicle for that ball to start rolling. Now, Councilman Sullivan stated at the last meeting that he was responding to a silent majority who have urged him to take that action. And if there indeed exists a silent majority in favor of those new ordinances, then produce their complaints and draft legislation that specifically recognizes those complaints. Then step aside and let the process be a dem democratic one. Let the voters decide. Addressing the recent council remarks that they didn't consider accepting the uh, fine being paid by a private citizen because they, they didn't want to accept stipulations. Let me give you the exact stipulations on that offer. Here it is. Do not accept the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Settlement and instead aggressively enforce the ordinance that was already in place. That's it. Period. Nothing further was added. Instead, the town is agreeing to let the U.S. Fish and Wildlife mandate their stipulations that the town employ a plover coordinator for no less than five years at the taxpayer's expense, and that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife retain authority at their discretion to order further restrictions, and that at any time they may reinstate that fine. That's a bad deal. The council now states they want to create four to five dog parks. Dog parks, on average, cost $50,000 apiece to create, and ten dollars to $20,000 a year to maintain. Portland spent $84,000 on theirs. They spend $24,000 a year to maintain it. One. That's one dog park. Instead, we could just simply share the beaches in Scarborough as we currently do without a single additional dime being charged to taxpayers. This is nothing less than a complete abdication of responsible government, governance by this council in what can only be viewed as a personal crusade to ban reasonable access for these beaches. Over 2,700 signatures have already been collected that demand this be brought to a vote. Invalidating those signatures doesn't change the fact that the people are giving this council a mandate to be heard. Make no mistake, if this council proceeds with a vote to accept this ordinance tonight, it is, clear, it is a clear signal that they are doing so to serve their own personal interests and ignoring the constituents' wishes. It's time for the council to step aside and let this go to a vote. Thank you. Next, three minutes, no applause. No we can cut this off now if you'd like, or we can continue. Now, calm down a little bit here and let the people uh, 
speak. Go ahead. Name and address, three minutes. Catherine Rogers, 373 Gorham Road. Two weeks ago, we were told it's time to come to the table. Last council meeting, you passed the most restrictive ordinance possible in order to get us to come to the table. I hate to tell you this, but we have been at the table <laughs> for months. We have been coming to these meetings, speaking at this podium. We have emailed, called, had conversations with you. We are here in red. We have been here, and yet you told us to come to the table. Well, 14 days later, and 2,753.54 signatures later, we have come to the table and said, <coughs> we don't want an animal control ordinance that leashes dogs 24-7-365. We have also come to the table to say that we want the citizens of Scarborough to vote on it. And clearly, if we can get those signatures in 14 days, then it's obvious the citizens of Scarborough want to vote on it as well. Has it occurred to you to ask why I'm here? I own a dog daycare. I have 3,000 square feet of fenced-in play area that my dogs can use any time. I don't need a dog park. I have my own. But that's not why I'm here. And there are other people who don't need, want, or can't utilize a dog park, the reasons for which I'm sure you've been hearing and will hear. I'm here because I love to go to the beach with my dog. Her behavior is impeccable. And she and I both get great joy from our visits. I'm here because I'm a taxpayer in this town. And I believe in sharing the town's resources. The old animal control ordinance provided time for everyone. There was time for dogs to be off leash, time for dogs to be on, time for no dogs at all. There were rules for dog owners that in a nutshell required them to be considerate of others. A good framework for a shared beach was already there. It certainly could have been better communicated and enforced, but it was already there. And that is what I have come to this table to say. And I have also come to the table to ask you to please have respect for the process. Respect the citizens you represent. Respect the more than 100 people who stepped up and poured their time, energy, and emotion into getting all of those signatures in just 14 days. Respect the 2,753 people who in spite of their wide range of opinions on the matter have made one request very clear. They want a voice and they want a vote to share Scarborough. Thank you. Next, three minutes please, name and address. Hi, Suzanne Foley Ferguson, 331 Black Point Road. Um, sharing Scarborough is really what this is about, sharing a resource that we have. The people the 2,700 people, they enjoy going to the beach. They enjoy walking their dogs on the beach. That is a particular type of user. Those people don't have alternatives if you take them away. The people that are afraid of dogs, they have alternatives. We've mentioned them. Scarborough Beach, Crescent Beach, uh, Western Beach, 9 to 5. We don't have those. One thing that's really bothered me about this is that this is a regional issue and you really haven't discussed it at, the t at your council table. Mm -hmm. the one of the stories I heard was a woman who's coming with a, uh, six people and they're going to rent cottages down at Higgins Beach um, from all over the country and they've come there every year renting six cottages but, and they're having a big wedding. They're going buy, buy, to rent the inn and practically all the rooms. But guess what? They're not coming here anymore. They're going to Willard Beach because they don't know what's going to happen in Scarborough. She was going to sign the contract last week. She's not. So that's an economic issue that you guys haven't really addressed. The other regional issue is that people from Portland and all the metro areas come in here and then they service our businesses. They buy coffees. They buy gas in our town. The third regional issue is that you are setting precedents. You know, Sometimes it's the questions that you don't ask that give you the most insight. And if I broke the law the, and I needed an attorney, the first thing I'd want my attorney to do is get the incident report, get the arrest warrant, because I got arrested. But when we asked the town last, before last meeting where the incident report was, 
The counsel has not seen the incident report of a death of a plover. The attorney who advised you on a $12,000 negotiation had never seen the incident report. Do you call that responsible governance? I don't. I'm sorry. I'm not here to shame you, but I'm saying that when you say your hands are tied, your hands are not tied. That is a bunch of baloney. Decisions are, on tough issues require respect for every person, even if you don't have the same opinion as them. It also uh, requires empathy for those who have a different one than you, and patience for people who have high emotions, and also tolerance for those that are uninformed. But I've got to tell you, you want your attorney to be informed about the law. And if your attorney hasn't even looked at the incident report and you're negotiating my tax dollars, that's a problem. If anyone's comfortable with that, <clears throat> then I think <clears throat> you might be happy that the dogs are leashed. But this is not about the plover again, and we are willing to come to the table and have a dialogue about how to, how to really protect the plovers. <clears throat> Thank you. I think you forgot to ask the questions, the right questions. Thank you. Next. Anybody else? We're going to wrap it up. Oh, sorry. I thought they were lying, sorry. Well, let's get moving. Uh, Seth Fernald, 45 Maple Avenue. Just made a list here of some items I heard. Uh, I'd like to echo, echo Eddie's thoughts about separating the town and the beach. I think that's a great idea. Uh, I think in town and on streets and such would be a great idea to look at the leash law. I think the beaches being a sovereign area to have dogs off leash would be a great idea. I know that's not what he was speaking of, but I think separating them is still an important part. 25% uh, of town being dog owners, we understand that. We're asking for 12% uh, off leash in the summer. I think that sounds to be fair. We're not asking to broaden the current ordinance that was in effect a couple weeks ago. Just asking to enforce what was in place. So 25% of the town has dogs. That's great. We only want half that time. 12% in the morning off leash. Uh, the dog parks, I, again, I, just, I hope we do market research to see if that's something the town, where, however this plays out, do market research to see if the town wants dog parks. I would hate to see money wasted on those and go to waste. Dog parks and beaches are not interchangeable. They're not, you know, they're just not the same thing. Uh, I hope we have six months before the plovers come back. If, if the plovers are situation, the question we're looking at. We have six months. If we could form a committee, sit down, cordially discuss this, I think that would be a great solution for everybody. Uh, I, I don't see why not. We have six months. Let's, you know, either let's take it to the vote, see what the town says, or use our time, put a committee together. This is obviously a hotbed topic. Let's discuss it. These three, you know, minute conversations don't seem to really do a lot. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to wrap it up here. Kathy Dragoni, 3 Winmore Drive. I don't really have a lot to, to add to what has already been said. Um, I was one of the petition collectors. I collected over 100 signatures um, myself. I sacrificed um, classes that I had paid, uh, training classes for my dog, and able to contribute and get the signatures in time. And if I sacrifice time with my dog, then you know that the issue is important to me. Uh, I treasure as everyone else does, the off time, the off leash time that I have on the beaches. I have terriers as well. Uh, I would lose them on Fuller Farm, Eastern Trail, um, all the places that I go regularly for on leash exercise. The beach is the only safe place <coughs> to run, or other, other when I'm not on an agility tr field. I had a lot of very productive conversations with the people that I uh, went door to door and spoke to them. And speaking about the percentage of dog owners in the town as compared to the total population, many, many, many people who signed my petitions were not dog owners. So there is a much broader base, basis of support for, for a some kind of ordinance that allows shared use then is reflected by the, the number of, of dog licenses that are purchased. And I have to say that there are many ideas that have been offered that have not been looked at. There has been no true dialogue. What 
we had a good ordinance. What was lacking were two key things, enforcement and education. You have a group now of, I don't know how many are in the Dogs of Greater Scarborough, but you have a broad-based group that could provide you with a volunteer effort. You have the VIPs, the Volunteers and Police Service. service. Could not volunteers from the Dogs of Greater Scarborough serve to, to both collaborate with you to decide what is the best ordinance for, for Scarborough and also um, help educate and, and going forward. I've drawn up a, a code of conduct for dog owners on the, 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 the beach. This could be a one-sheet piece of paper that's handed out to every single person when they renew their dog license. It could be turned into signage on the beaches. There are so many more things that have not been explored that we need time to explore. We need to let the voters of Scarborough weigh in and tell us what they want. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else like to speak on anything? Seeing none, close the public comment section. Next item. Item 5 is minutes of the October 2nd, uh, 2013 meeting. It's a pleasure of the council. Move. 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 Second. Any areas of remissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Adjustments to the agenda, I have none. You have none. Uh, item I 7, treasurer's warrants. We'll sign those through the meeting. Uh, item item eight. 8 is request from Chairman Alquist to reconsider order number 1361. Having voted on the prevailing side of item uh, number 13-61, I move to reconsider. Is there a second? And yeah, we need a second. I'll second it for purposes of discussion. Sure. I moved for re uh, reconsideration because I feel that we went too far. I said that in the beginning. It had nothing to do with a petition or who signed it, who put it around. It was way before that. I thought that <coughs> we uh, shouldn't restrict people in town-owned property away from the beach uh, to be on leashes. Dogs ought to have a place that they can run freely, and I thought that that was a good idea. So that's my reasoning to do that is that I thought we went a bit too far. Council Roy? Yeah, and um, I know uh, tonight people have said that we, we shouldn't be listening to IFW, um, but IFW is, a li is the arm of the United States Department of Interior. Um, I, have, I have to trust uh, that legal counsel has provided us with the appropriate information, um, but in order to satisfy their, de their demands, my, my, my thought was if we reconsider, what would that do? It would bring us back to how it was presented to us as a second reading at the October 2nd meeting without any amendments, without the amendment requiring leasing um, on all town-owned property because that component of it, in my estimation, was very, very premature. And, and looking into a number of the land trust properties, the Libby Farm, Fuller Farm, the Sewell Farm, the Broadturn Farm, all of them already have some rules regarding how the dogs uh, need to behave on their properties. And they've also said that um, should there be people who don't follow the rules that they have, um, that they would you know, say that no dogs could be on those parcels. But uh, so obviously some things are happening on town-owned parcels are ready um, to regulate, you know, regulate dogs' behavior. Well, it isn't dogs' behavior, it's people's behavior. Um, dogs behave well if, if their owners behave well. So uh, those, are, those are the basic reasons why I, I thought reconsideration would be appropriate. Um, I think, you know, we've been accused of not allowing di dialogue, but where did this all start? This started in Ordinance Committee. Councillor Sullivan is the chair of Ordinance Committee, and um, based on the incident with the piping plover, um, we, they, had, they were asked to address the ordinance. No public came to the Ordinance Committee, and that's where the dialogue happens. And so in the process, people missed a step, and certainly that was, that was, the, that was the place for, for the dialogue. Um, She's right. <coughs> Are you asking me for clarification, Chairman Elquist? No. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. No. She's so, co you're correct. Sorry. You know, and, and I, you know, I just, I just think, 
I think, too, as, as I'm listening and, you know, again, we're getting accused of not listening, not willing, you know, I, I have read so many things and, and done a, as much research as I can do. Um, but I think, too, I overheard conversations at some of the booths where the petitions were signed relative to this that was misinformation. So, you know, um, and, and then a lot of people are saying that dogs are unfriendly to them and they're aggressive. Well, part of the ordinance already addresses that. But when you look at the fact that only 30, 30 uh, uh, complaints were made and uh, forms filled out with the police department, the data isn't there to show that, you know, 100 dogs are out there out molesting people. Um, so, I, you know, I, I considered that. Um, and the other thing that certainly um, you're t we talk about we're spending a lot of your tax dollars, certainly going to petition and going to referendum is spending a lot of tax dollars as well. So, tit for tat. So, but I just thought if we could get it back to what was presented as the motion prior at, at, the, at the October 2nd meeting, prior to any amendments, um, and then there are some adjustments that would need to be done to that based on, because the, when that agenda item was set, we had not gotten the final agreement from the IFW, okay? And there were, there were a couple things that we wanted to negotiate on. One was the dates of April 1st to September 15th, which is what was in the, uh, the second reading. And they agreed that, that April 1st could be April 1st to August 31st, and so that we, we were happy with that. The other area that we w tried to negotiate, and the manager negotiated very hard with them, was the leash length. I mean, eight foot, and I agree, I love the analogy of the six foot tall man and the, and the little dog. I mean, certainly. And uh, the play acting, by the way, was very good. Um, uh, and it just didn't make sense, but they went to the degree of drawing diagrams of circumference of distance from the leash and, and lots of things. So we tried to negotiate really hard on those things because we knew they were off the wall. I was unhappy with the August 1st, I mean April 1st, because uh, none of the data said plovers had been seen in Scarborough before our, uh, April 5th, 14th, I think, was the first thing uh, that I found in the Audubon 2012 report. That, you know, it was August uh, April 14th before any plover was sighted. They, but they, they did come up with an answer for us saying that Piping plovers have been sighted on the Kennebunkport Beach uh, as early as March 11th. Okay, and and by the way, the IFW is talking and working with Kennebunk and Kennebunkport on their ordinances re relative to togs on the beach. So we're not alone in the, we're not alone in this. So um, let's see what other things that I Ron told me not to wa not to talk too much, but I've been working on Lost this that. very very hard. Um, another thing that was just brought up that the councils have decided we need four or five parks. I have not heard any councillor make that statement. No, none of them have made it to me that we want to create four to five parks. I think that was one of the key things is do we really want dog parks? I mean, some of them are nasty places for your dogs to be. Uh, I have four dogs, so those statistics are wrong because there's four in my house. Um, but is that really what we wanted? And so if we could, if we could, my, my point being, if we could get it back to just the bare minimum requirements that IFW and the United States Department of Interior are asking of us, then we have time between now and uh, April 1 to work on the coordinating the education, coordinating the enforcement and how that's going to play out. And we have talked about using VIP and reserve officers and the animal control office and lots of things there, as well as coordinating signage throughout all of the beaches because there's some variances. There are no signs out there in French or, or Spanish. Uh, that's one thing. We have a lot of French Canadians that come. So there are a lot of things that, and I have the stack of emails that we've, we've gotten over and there are absolutely great ideas in there, and I think there are a lot of things that we can institute without changing the ordinance any further than the bare minimum of IFW, the bare minimum, and the, the other things do not have to enter into the ordinance, it's plans and ho as how you, how you enforce it, because we obviously are not enforcing it appropriately. We have one animal control officer right now, and there's no way that he can 
you know, tri-locate or quad-locate himself and be, be everywhere. Uh, it takes education and training and vol of volunteers, of interns. Um, IFW has offered to uh, provide some interns that we could train. So there's lots of things to be done that I think the collective group of folks have great ideas about, and we have been listening. I mean, to say that we haven't been listening, uh, we've been gracious. We we don't overreact because we get we get chided because we overreact. We try to be respectful of you, the citizens. So, um, you know. But anyway, those are my reasons, uh, and I would hope that this council would uh, search their hearts and search their heads and be sensible about it and bring it back to at least the bare minimum. It's not something that everybody can't live with. Nobody's going to die at this point and work on ways in which we can perhaps maybe expand the leash length uh, with some cooperative effort by a permit to have a longer lead or, you know, there are a, a lot of ways I think we could work around some of that. So those are my reasonings. I, Thank you, I, uh, Council Roy. Appreciate it. Uh, other councilors like to speak on the reconsideration? Yeah, I'd like to. Council Blaise. Um, this is a very, very difficult process to go through, and, and the process, our process does not lead to or lend itself to discussion with the public. I mean, you saw that. Three minutes. One meeting, three minutes, another meeting. We don't get to talk to you head to head. We don't get to talk to each other head to head very often. But a lot of the information that we get is not only from the public hearings, but they're from letters that we receive, emails, phone calls, and personal contacts with other people. Now, I was in favor of the amendments, and I'm going to tell you why I was in favor of it. The first thing is, there's one thing nobody ever seems to take a look at, and that's the purpose of the Animal Control Ordinance. And it says the purpose of this ordinance is to require that all animals in the town of Scarborough be kept under control of their owner or keeper at all times <laughs> so that they will not injure persons or other animals, damage property, or create public health threat. All the ordinances have that state. The old ordinance, or the one that was, well, actually it's still in effect, but the basis of the old ordinance is voice control. Um, I'm not a big fan of voice control. I don't think it works. I'll bet that there's not 5% of the dogs in this town that could be considered under voice control. If you look at the definition of voice control, voice control means that the dog returns immediately to and remains by the side of the responsible party in response to the responsible party's verbal command. Now, people say, well, you don't enforce the ordinance. How are you supposed to enforce something like that? Are we going to send a police officer out there and go up to somebody and say, do you have a dog on the beach? Yep. Where's your dog? It's over there. Call it for me. I mean, to me, you can't enforce it. It's tough to, to enforce. Um, I think the reason a lot of people don't like dogs on the beach are because they come running up to you. They bump into you. I had a dog for a long time. I used to take him down to the beach. I'd walk him in the wintertime, always on lead, and I stopped doing it because dogs would kept, kept running up and bothering us all the time. And nobody would ever come and get their dogs. So that's where a lot of this is coming from. You know, there's two sides to this story. We heard a couple people get up and say, but there are two sides to it. Um, so I don't think voice control supports the purpose of the ordinance. I think the new ordinance requiring dogs to be on leashes 
eight feet on the beach. Eight feet on the beach is fine in the summertime when the plovers are there. And the reason for the eight foot lead for the plovers is because eight feet is about the farthest you can see the plover. So if you can't see the plover, you're not going to be able to protect your dog from taking a plover. That's the purpose of the eight feet. In the winter time, it doesn't have to be. Um, so, Councilor, I, Councilor Blade, I, I just want to mention we're talking about whether we should reconsider I, or not. I understand that, but I want them to understand what what the amendment is. Okay. Um, I think the new ordinance supports the the purpose of the ordinance. And there's something in the in the amendment that says it allows for designated areas. Now everybody's been talking about dog parks. Designated area can also be a beach, and I would think that we would use our beaches. But the thing is that we have to use our beaches smartly. We have to share our beaches. You have certain times of the day when dogs can be down there, okay. And then other times of the day they can't be down there, or you take, or you take certain sections of the beach, and they say that's for the dogs. That's not. That's what the designated areas are. Okay. This is all new. I mean, we haven't really gotten into this, but this is what we're thinking. Um, and to me, this supports the purpose of the ordinance. And in summary, I'm in favor of letting the referendum go and let the public go for it. Thank you. Okay, um, please. Uh, the next, anybody else want to speak on reconsideration? Anybody? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay, St. Clair. It's, it's maddening at times to sit here and listen to misinformation. Uh, misinformation, I think, can be spread like wildfire. It, I always feel like bad news travels so much faster than good news, and it's, it's hard to sit here. I, it's impossible. You're so right. It's impossible to have a dialogue when we're just sitting here listening to you for three minutes because we can't respond. So you say something, in the back of our head we're thinking, oh, I should write that down, I want to email them, and it's just... It's overwhelming. You're not the only ones overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed. We're human beings. People seem to be forgetting that fact. <laughs> I'm embarrassed by some of the emails that I've received in the last two weeks. And I would think that you would be embarrassed. I would never, no matter what the situation was, treat somebody the way that we've been treated. Um, we're, I personally think we're all reasonable people. Trust me, we would not be doing this if we didn't love this town. It has nothing to do with that. We want to work with you. Um, it's hard for me when I hear people saying, we haven't had a dialogue. Let's go through my emails. I can tell you out of the 45 emails that I've gotten in the last three days, maybe two of those were coming at me saying, can we have a reasonable discussion about this? They weren't, they weren't like that. That's hard for us. It, we're, we have human emotions. Um, none of us dislike dogs. That's not the issue here. We want to work with you. Um, there's no way I'm going to support a reconsideration on this. I, I honestly believe I'm the first person to admit when I've made a mistake. Do I think we pushed that through and rushed that? Yes, I do. I am, again, I've said this to numerous people. I don't mind admitting when I make a mistake. I still feel in my gut that it was the right thing to do. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of things that factor there. Um, there are areas for designated. I mean, we can designate anything we want with input from you. We want that. We need that. That's the only way you can make a town work is if you get input from its citizens. So please stop saying that we don't want your input. That's not the case. Um, I don't like to speak for other counselors. I completely respect everything that they've all said in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I, I can't. I need this at this point. Maybe it is too big for us. Maybe it does need to go to the town. And so that's why I, I can't vote for a reconsideration on this. It's, I think it needs to take its due process. I think you've made some very valid points. I think I have some very valid points. And so they don't necessarily agree. That's okay. That's part of the democratic process. We're not always going to agree. But let's come back to the table and try to figure this out. Thank you. Council Roy. Um, 
Again, with the reconsideration, I did spend some time, and I, I talked with Kate. I asked her to come for coffee with me, and I did not say, you must vote this way or you must vote that way. I presented what I thought and asked her to think about it. Um, I talked with Councillor uh, Benedict and uh, said the same thing to him. I was on the phone with Councillor uh, Sullivan, who chose not to be here tonight, who spearheaded most of this, and he very nicely said to me, you know, Judy, I've been thinking about what you said, and I agree. But yet today, when he spoke with Councillor Alquist, he changed his tune. And I can't deal with that. I am totally, utterly embarrassed by how some councillors have handled this whole situation. I, I, at this point, wish my name was not on the ballot. Uh, that's how uncomfortable I am feeling because I'm getting positive statements from folks saying, yeah, it's probably something that I can agree with, and then I turn around and I can't reach the knife in my back. Um, and, and I have never experienced to this degree this kind of, this kind of response on, on a council. And I've sat on this council for 15 years. Fifteen years I have served this community. I've lived here for 61 years of my 70. And I, I just can't, I, I, you know, I think reconsideration is extremely important. And if we, even if we reconsider and go back to the second reading and say at the second reading, please send this back, uh, a, a motion to send it back to Ordinance Committee, where the dialogue can again happen. Uh, there are ways to, to take care of it, but to force the public and to blindside the public with that amendment that banned, I mean, required dogs to be leashed on all town property, I had heard a little bit of the vibes of it, but I really didn't think that anybody was going to go through with that, and, and, I'm, and just totally, I'm totally discouraged. I think you need to put your thinking caps on, and if you reconsider, if we go back to that other one, I mean, I'm ready to offer the motions that cover IFW, but I'm also ready to make an amendment to say, send it back to committee. We, you know, but we, we run the risk of the $12,000 fine, and if not, no uh, more, and if we went to court, that's 250000 and I'm not willing to spend that kind of tax dollar either. So reconsideration is, w is one way that hopefully we can avoid some of the cost of the town and come to some reasonable decisions with all kinds of ideas that the folks have given us. And, and that's why I think that reconsideration is extremely important. And that you take a few moments and really think hard and make some more comments, but I just really, I, I, I just don't understand that. Councilor Holbrook. Um, I'm happy to support a reconsideration, and I think there's, um, and, and I said this at, at the last meeting too, I think the designated areas, and, and I can support in, as a long-term future item having the leashes laws in effect, um, but I think that it certainly was something that was added that kind of dynamically changed what we were talking about. Um, I think if we... I'm open to everything as far as, you know, putting the reconsideration on the table and then moving forward from there. What the final product is, whether it's something like Judy's speaking about, whether it's with a postponement date of the effectiveness until April 1st so that we can allow some time through the winter months for the dialogue to reach out to maybe have ordinance set forth some more recommendations. Uh, what, whatever, wherever that falls, whether it's just taking up a section of it or whether it's putting a postponement date on it, um, I, I could go either way with it. It certainly doesn't bother me, but um, I, I certainly do support a reconsideration. Council Benedict. <coughs> There's a couple of aspects that all of us can agree on. We haven't touched on a bunch of subjects that greatly affect families in this town. We have a slot of people called fishermen. And the reason I bring this up is I know that the IFW there is holding over our head. You don't do this, we don't do that, and it, it, it's gotten entangled more so than I ever thought I'd see anything get entangled. Tear on the town apart, I agree with you. Uh, something that should be very minimal and easy to fix becomes the hardest. We figure if that doesn't get dredged and they can hold it over our head, they're not stupid. 
But the fishermen that come out of just Pine Point and have, have for years, if this thing doesn't get dredged, and I've heard it from them, not from the IFW, if it doesn't get, they're scraping their boats now. In another year or two, the majority of them won't be able to get them out, starting with the biggest, the heaviest. They're the deepest. So that, that, that's, that's one of the aspects that I find it very hard that you want to send your neighbors down the street and be out of work. And they count too. And no one seems to have thought about that. And we're all throwing, throwing around proclamations of they and thee. And I, I finally refer to it in my house as they from theyville. When we want to make a point and make it bigger, well, they from theyville. And every one of us in this room have heard that as a, 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 an action for come on my side. There's other people out here, and I, I know that you're going to say, well, they should be here too. I agree. But they're still there. So how do you feel when we... The opposite side of people that don't like dogs want to have a public beach to themselves. I don't mind them being part of the process, too, in whatever way they feel comfortable. <clears throat> this whole thing started back in 2001, 2002, 2003. And some of you that are in here were on the council at that time. And that's where this problem started. Right or wrong, that's where it started. And it's now prolonged itself to $12,000. Or we can do this, or we can do that. And as far as in my mind, that as, the, as it's written... It needs some dots and cross T's, but the major bulk of it is, is acceptable to me. So I will be voting no. On Thank that. you. Uh, I just want to make clear up one point. You know, the discussion about the plover uh, didn't come up when one was killed. It was uh, the discussion came up before that. I brought it up in March to the council saying that we need to talk about this. We need to look at our ordinances and uh, that we have on the books. And if they need to be tweaked, we need to do it. So it wasn't about the plover that got killed. We had, were in discussions before that. Seeing no other comments. Uh, all those in favor of the reconsideration? One, two, three. All those opposed? It dies uh, at a tie vote. All right, next item. It's, that's it on that, so if you guys want to, why don't we take a five minute break? We'll take a five minute break. Five minute break. <laughs> he, uh, he's on the moose hunt. Is that excuse? Thank you. Have know. a good I mean, night. He was, he was adamant we'll about this issue. Yeah, he's not, not for me. Something this important, I expected.
Following new request for a food handler's license, we have Starbucks Corporation doing business at Starbucks Coffee, located at 208 U.S. Route 1, and Tim Hortons USA Inc. doing business at Tim Hortons, located at 398 U.S. Route 1. This is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this matter? Please step up. Give your name and address in three minutes. Seeing none. Last call. I'll close the public hearing. And the wish of the council. Well, it's the wish of the council. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? It's a vote. Next order, please. Order number 1377 is the 7 p.m. public hearing action on the laying out and taking of a public easement pursuant to Title 30A of the Maine Revised Statute, subsections 3101, and of uh, Title 23 of the Maine Revised Statute. Statutes subsections 3022 and 3023 for a sidewalk across certain property identified as R73, lot 20 on the town assessor's map and located at the corner of Black Point and Eastern Road. Before we open the public hearing, I'll ask the town managers to give us a brief explanation. Very brief. Uh, this is the final piece uh, to condemn through uh, eminent domain proceedings a, about 4,300 square feet of road um, off Black Point Road from the I believe it's a Black Point Condominium Association, uh, otherwise known as Camperdown Elm. Uh, this has been an amicable process. Uh, frankly, we are encouraged to follow this process by the association, given the complexity of um, uh, them needing to get votes through their membership and the likelihood of success in that regard. Um, so we uh, have followed the statutory requirements, and the final piece is the public hearing this evening and the condemnation order that you're about to consider. Thank you. This is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? Please step up, state your name. You have three minutes. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the council? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Okay, under old business is order number 1354. It's a first reading and refer to the planning board on the proposed amendments to chapter 405, the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, with regards to T&D overlay district relating to density factors and density bonuses. Yes. I'll ask uh, Dan Bacon, our town planner, if he would give us a brief, brief explanation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, zoning amendment does apply to uh, the traditional neighborhood development uh, zoning district, also termed the T&D. Um, this was actually before you back in June. Um, prior to your June 1st re reading, the Long Range Planning Committee had been working on an amendment to this zone to allow uh, the zone to use um, an additional type of density bonus known as development transfer to go from four units per acre in the project to five units per acre. Uh, the project is underway and there's an existing density bonus for affordable housing and the Long Range Planning Committee was recommending a, an additional way to um, establish additional density. At that June meeting, um, the council tabled the action for further consideration by the Housing Alliance, um, given that the TND was crafted with a strong emphasis on creating affordable housing. Um, so over uh, the late summer and fall, the Affordable Housing Alliance has been working uh, with Mr. Anderson, the developer in Eastern Village in the zone, and as a group to come up with some additional amendments um, that are before you this evening. So um, in sort of in lieu of that proposal in June, there's a new version that's um, in your packets for tonight's meeting dated um, October 3rd. Um, and it kept intact a lot of the Long Range Planning Committee recommendations, but also added at the recommendation endorsement of the Housing Alliance, a new uh, density bonus approach, which is being termed um, an in-lieu fee for affordable housing. So um, within the TND, uh, the development could utilize additional density um, by actually paying a fee for additional housing units at $20,000 uh, per additional unit, and that fee could be put into an account to be used by the town on affordable housing initiatives in town, such as helping fund infrastructure, uh, construction costs for affordable housing projects, lower interest, um, a loan program for affordable buyers. So this was vetted by the Housing Alliance and recommended as a new alternative, um, and other than that, um, forwards along the Long Range Planning Committee's recommendation as well. So that's the 
Just, just a final uh, comment on procedures. As the matter was, since the matter was tabled before council considered action, what's before you this evening uh, reflects uh, the result of the input and recommendations from the alliance and other other parties. So you're seeing it for the first time and considering it in first reading this evening. Thank you. This is a first reading, so can we have a motion before we have discussion, please? Move approval of Order 13-54. Second. Discussion? Any discussion? Anybody? Um, I, I just would offer um, a few comments. Um, this has been um, a really enlightening, actually, experience um, as a counselor and also for the housing audience. Um, Carrie Anderson is, um, as you know, is the developer and the large stakeholder of the TND zone. Um, he's been extremely gracious and has offered um, a task, uh, offered a task to him that he has since provided, which was, um, uh, is going to be a very useful tool in the future going through um, to try to generate affordable housing. Um, we had asked him to kind of take some time and to write out some thoughts about what were the roadblocks and what are the roadblocks in the town as far as um, why we're not getting the affordable housing, um, why that, you know, that price point isn't being met. Um, so that would be in the kind of definitions of that workforce price point. Um, there's a lot of great thoughts. That's the additional paper that's in front of you. Um, I've also uh, asked Tom if we could reach out to some of the other developers in town. Um, and ask them the same question, what are the problems, um, what are, do you see as possible solutions that we can do as a town to, to help and move forward? Um, because this is certainly something that is um, a problem for us in Scarborough. That price point housing and that stock, housing stock is um, minimal at best. Um, so this will be a great tool and, and resource in the future. Um, I guess the Biggest note I could say is um, they did discuss whether or not um, the committee had, um, there is also, there are several options in this packet. There's um, the in lieu fee as well as um, they can build more houses um, if they're utilizing the affordable bonus. Um, they did discuss the um, development transfer provision. Um, it was the committee's decision that that was a recommendation through long-range planning and although it's certainly, you know, more preferable to have an affordable segment uh, that they didn't feel comfortable recommending to remove that. Um, the development transfer program, as you know uh, or may not know, is uh, strictly for land preservation, so it would be um, development right somewhere else, so nothing affordable would happen, but um, it does conserve land somewhere else. Um, but certainly, um, I wholeheartedly support it. Um, again, you know, the, the in lieu fee um, is, again, a great idea, a great concept. Um, even if the, you know, affordable, if there's an affordable unit that's not built in that zone, it could be applied to something else or buying property for another project somewhere else or helping to use that money to help fund uh, current projects. Um, so it's certainly a great concept. And... Um, They'll be looking at that for some other zones as well, that possibility and that potential. So, uh, Thank you. Can, can I ask a question? How, um, how is all of this going to be monitored? It, will it be monitored by the planning department? Or in terms of um, if what affordable bonuses developers choose to use mm -hmm. or how the money is spent? A, if they a little of both. There's in the language, uh, in terms of how the money is spent, there's um, Specifics that's going to go in the zoning district, or the zoning ordinance that spells out the type of projects the in lieu fee can be spe um, paid, spent on, and that it needs to be segregated from um, the general fund and, and so other be revenues part, of the part community. of the review of the planning board. It be incorporated in their review to make sure those things are encompassed within. Yes, and there would be an account set up by the finance department dedicated only for affordable housing expenditures. Um, mm -hmm. I think an example was maybe the helping the habitat project that's proposed on Broad Turn Road. Um, if a fee was paid, that could go to something I, like that. I apologize for asking the question, but my, yeah. my, most of my energies has been on the other mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. The expectation is the council would, it, would approve those expenditures. Mm -hmm. It would be a council decision as those come before. And, and certainly the alliance may talk about them and make recommendations in that regard. In fact, I would expect them to do that, but I 
believe the council would control that account and therefore authorize expenditure. Um, before we go any further, I'd neglect to ask anybody from the public if they'd like to speak on this matter. If you do, just step up and state your name and address. Seeing none, uh, no other comments. Pleasure of the council. All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Thank you. Uh -huh. Under new business, order number 1378 is the first reading and referred to the planning board the proposed amendments to the town of Scarborough official zoning map to update the zoning districts that apply to property located at 16 Pine Point Road. Go ahead. Yep. Name and address, please. And Karen Martin with the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Uh, I'm here to present a request from June Escott. Uh, owner and resident at 16 Pine Point Road to change your property from a residential zone of R4 to town and village center. And the reason SEDCO is involved in this is we have worked with uh, Ms. Escott before. Um, she had worked with uh, Mr. Rosenfeld on many occasions when she was running um, her day spa. So I believe you have a memo that detailed some of the uh, uh, facts of the, of the rezoning, but in the interest of time, if I might cut to the chase here, um, what she's proposing is to have her, zone, have her property go back to town and village center. When I brought that to the planning department and spoke with Dan about that, uh, all other discussions aside, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and it does return this piece of property um, to a zone that I think is more uh, um, suitable to the particular property given its orientation um, and the parking and other things that are available um, to it. And when Dan and I looked at this, we felt like we should take it to the Long Range Planning Committee and let them make a determination of whether that should go forward uh, to the council. In the discussions with the Long Range Planning Committee, um, what they felt was, uh, given that it's consistent with the Long Range Plan, with the comprehensive plan, given the characteristics of the site where there is parking and it is oriented toward uh, the Pine Point uh, Animal Hospital, that it really did make sense to bring that back to uh, Town and Village Center. And in looking at that, um, they did identify three other properties in the area which had been split by, a zone, split by a zone boundary. And to clean up some of that zoning, they wanted to go ahead and put those three properties um, into, uh, wholly into one zone or the other. And so that's what you have before you. It's really four properties. Um, one is the 16 Pine Point Road um, moving from R4 into TVC and then three other properties where the boundary gets cleaned up um, and uh, those move to um, the zones in which they were predominantly uh, located. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, <laughs> yeah, anybody from the public would like to speak on this matter? Please step up. If not, what's the uh, pleasure of the council? I would move approval. Second. Comments? Questions? Council Roy. Uh, in, in relationship to the, uh, the other three parcels, we had looked at those three parcels when we were talking about the Risbearer apartment complex and, uh, and at that time and I, we really, I think, missed the boat. We forgot to incorporate those, those, those three triangular <coughs> pieces into that. Um, the other thing I think, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I, I don't want to jeopardize this in any way, but um, this parcel was originally TBC and, and she had asked prior to have it changed to R4, which we did, which was what, two years ago? 2010, yes. Yeah, in 2010. Uh, um, and then, so now she, you know, she's, she's looking at it and recon, re, the reconsideration and certainly uh, as we looked at it in long range planning, it certainly does fit better in the TBC. and. Um, I, th I think the, the earlier decision to revert it to R4 was not a good one. Um, I would hope this would be the last change for her person, but uh, certainly makes sense. And, I, you know, uh, I've been down by it recently, and it does lend itself well to, uh, to the TBC. Thank you. What's the um, 
pleasure of the council. I, I made the motion to approve. Yeah, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, and I like your Red Sox sweater. Looks great. Don't look <laughs> no. Order number 1379 is act to authorize the town manager to sign the purchase option agreement with Habitat for Humanity for property located at 75 Broad Turn Road. I'll turn over to yes, did very quickly, I'm pleased to mention that we're uh, the relationship with Habitat for Humanity for Greater Portland is moving along as we anticipated. Uh, the council may recall, I believe, uh, this council approved the memo of understanding that laid out the basic elements of the deal. Um, and, and again, we are moving through that process and to the point of actually needing to transfer ownership of that land. And that begins with um, what's before you this evening, which is a purchase option agreement. This uh, agreement has been drafted by the town attorney and provides ample protections uh, to benefit the town and considers, the, I guess, the complexity of the relationship and, and, and the deal, if you will. So I seek your authorization to sign this document on behalf of the town and keep this process moving forward. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. Any comments? Seeing one. <laughs> I imagine Red Sox is still on. Uh, I promise I'll make it quick. Um, just just for, for the public to understand, too. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm really excited about this. This has been a very long project that's taken a very you know long time to put all the pieces and the cogs together, um, neighborhood meetings and, and lots of meetings with Habitat. and. Um, you know, this is just that next step, that next great piece. Um, so I just wanted, so folks are, are, are understanding, um, yes, this is agreement that we will be giving um, ownership of the land over to Habitat, but we do retain um, an interest in the property. We have um, what's called a silent, soft second on, on the property. So um, if something happened, I mean, we do recoup over time um, the, the, the land value. Um, with the forgiveness over a period of time. I don't remember off the top of ten, my head. Ten, ten years, ten, ultimately. Ten years. Um, so, um, but just that you don't think you've given away something to somebody, there, there is a recoup there. Um, and this is, like I said, just that next step in a, a great project, and I hope you all Thank support you. it. I, too, think it's a great idea and long overdue, and it is exciting to see this certainly uh, move forward. Seeing no other comments, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Thank you. Next item. Order number 13-80 is act to set the date, time, and location for the municipal election for Tuesday, number, November 5th, 2013. Appoint the warden, set the hours for voter registration, act on the appointments of election ballot clerks pursuant to Chapter 200, Article 8, nominations and elections, and authorize the town clerk to make any additional appointments as necessary. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, Todi, this is something we do every... Every election. Every yes. election, so it's just kind of a normal kind of a thing. That's a pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. Any comments? Uh, do we, who do we appoint as the warden? Is that, uh, is that automatically you? No, it's Sky Gledhill. Okay. Does he always do it? I'm yes. Assuming. Yeah. So does that have to be part of this or, or it, what? It's, it is automatically part of it. Okay. Yeah. You're going <coughs> to... Sign something here in a minute, yes. right? To make a part of it. Seeing no other questions, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Non-action items? We have none. Standing and special committee reports? We see none tonight. Council Roy, take, take your three minutes now. All right. Or later. Finance committee meeting uh, was, uh, the last one was October 8th, and we talked with the Public Works Department. These are open dialogue meetings to discuss what the wants versus needs, discretionary, you know, discretionary things in their, in their departments that they do versus things that they have to do. Um, by law and, and because of safety. And then uh, we will be meeting next Tuesday, the 22nd at 8 a.m., and we will have the fire rescue uh, departments there. And uh, those, those have been really helpful, and we're not talking dollars and cents. We're just looking at how the departments function and how we can streamline it and how, how we can, um, you know, be, ha realize some cost savings and lower budget. And that's an answer to Marty Tripp. 
Um, the GPCOG Steering Committee, or actually the Executive Committee met today at noon. I was un unable to attend that. Um, SEDCO did have their annual meeting October 8th at the Black Point Inn. That was very successful. Uh, Energy Committee meeting is going to be uh, next Tuesday at 7.30. It's in conflict with the Finance Committee, so Tom and I will not be at that. But they're going to talk about some solar energy um, uh, use. And I don't, I don't know what else was on the agenda. Solar energy and I think it was predominantly the solar energy looking at some of those potentials. And then Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, the last meeting was the 4th. And Dan's left now. I don't know when the next meeting of that is. So those are it. That's Thank it. you very much. Quick. I did it quick. Uh, yep. Well, used up your three minutes. <laughs> Plus Holbrook. Um, so you know what my housing alliance has been up to. Um, real quick, we do have some appointments. Um, Alex Concausal for and William uh, Frothingham for Board of Assessment Review. Um, Brian Young and Frank Beveridge for Senior Program Advisory. Um, Community Services and Recreation Board is Roger Chabot and Becky Delaware for Historic Preservation and Sandra Alquist for Personal Appeals. <laughs> and what else? I had um, Historic... Becky Delaware. Becky Delaware. For Historic Preservation, yep. And then Sandra Alquist. Okay. And um, we can have the minutes. Thank you. Yeah, there's something else in the background. Uh, out, of, out of mind. Thank you. Council of St. Clair. Nope. Oh. The place. Uh, just a quick note on the seniors uh, program. They started the year with 325 members and they're currently at 450 and they're looking to get to 500 by the end of the year. I've got another uh, report, but I'll save that until the next meeting. Thank you. That's nice. Council Benedict. <coughs> with the uh, other business going on, we have not had any meetings. Uh, for the last month due to time constraints. Um, that's about it. I know on behalf of uh, Mr. S Sullivan, uh, the Ordinance Committee will be meeting Tuesday. Tuesday at 6. Five, three, no. Six. Is it 6? I think it's 5.30. 5.30 next Tuesday. Thank you. Excuse me. Sorry, Thank Jim. You. And that's it. Thank you. Town manager's report. Yes, a few quick things. Um, just to bring you up to speed, Councillor Holbrook brought to my attention, and we've done some investigation, the Honeywell House, uh, the so-called oldest structure. I, I don't want to say so-called. Uh, the oldest structure known in Scarborough, located down here on Black Point Road and Widow's Neck Road, uh, is in fairly dire need of some attention. There's issues with some floor, uh, floor rot. Um, it's, it's fairly heavily wooded and thus the, the roof is in fairly hard shape. So we're right now kind of assessing the situation and we'll be working with the various groups that have interest, those being various committees and, and those members through the years that have worked on the project. The Scarborough Historical Society and the Garden Club all have some level of interest in the Honeywell House, so we'll be careful to include those groups as we go forward. And I'll certainly report to Council as we know more. I uh, just uh, want to give you a very brief update on projects. Uh, we are working just as fast and hard as we can to get things done before the snow flies. Pine Point Road, uh, Eastern Trail side, a crosswalk uh, will be completed by tomorrow with the exception of the actual lights themselves, but all the other work will be complete. Pine Point Road sidewalk, all the flat work, if you will, the surface of the sidewalks were poured today. Uh, there'll be ongoing work probably through the end of next week to complete that project. Uh, Black Point Road will start uh, this coming week, Monday the 21st. And Jasper Street um, received sub uh, pavement today, binder course pavement, and we expect that will be completed by the end of the week as well. Uh, you might have noticed there's a couple of repairs occurring uh, down in the Dunstan intersection. These are areas that were noted through the construction process that were deficient, and uh, they've milled out areas and repaved them just uh, last night and today. And also work is ongoing on Black Point Road and Winters Neck Road with uh, um, 
uh, simple resurfacing and, and overlay pavement. So you'll see that work ongoing. And the last thing, um, a project that Councilor Alquist and I have been working on for well over a year uh, is a joint project with the City of Saco to study the possibility of a new interchange on the Turnpike. Uh, point being to find uh, kind of a midpoint of relief to allow commuter traffic in particular uh, that right now is probably traveling its way to wherever it's going along Route 1 and causing us challenges all the way through that system. And Saco has a similar problem. And we're looking at, uh, I believe there are different, five different alternative locations. Uh, they're all kind of between Flag Pond, Cascade Road, and Saco up to the Scarborough Line, but they all do exist, um, not all of them, but the majority of them uh, would happen in Saco, uh, but we believe would provide uh, some significant relief to the town. The next step in this process and why I bring it up is for us to, um, both communities to sign a joint letter and petition the Maine Turnpike Authority to look at this more carefully. And this is a far more in-depth study um, that would look at all the environmental impacts and cost and feasibility and such. Uh, perhaps as a parting gesture of counselor, for Councillor Arquist, we'd like to get this on the next council agenda, which would be his last meeting. And, uh, the Dan only Bacon, thing on that agenda, probably. Perhaps the only thing on that agenda. <laughs> and uh, we're certainly prepared to either have a workshop or, or provide some information, more detailed information at that meeting as you see fit. So thank you for your attention. Yep. Uh, Councillor Comments, Councillor St. Clair. Councillor Blay. No. Councillor Benedict. No. Council Roy, you get 22 seconds. <laughs> Remaining of your three minutes. Well, I, I can't leave without saying something, and, and certainly I'm very disheartened by tonight's proceedings. Uh, I'm always willing to compromise, and I don't think that happened at all. Um, I was willing to let go of any amendments and revert it back to ordinance committee so that the true democratic process could take place, so the people could give input. But my colleagues uh, failed to see the uh, importance of that. Um, and like I said, I wish my name was not on the ballot. If, if I could pull my name today, I would. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Holbrook? I have nothing. I, uh, my final comments is I also am disappointed with the, uh, what went on here tonight. I Certainly, I think sometimes councils don't know what they vote on or what happened, and it's too confusing or whatever, but certainly to make a commitment and uh, to go back and try to rework things and make things better and fairer was a good idea for me to bring it forward. It had nothing to do with uh, any kind of petition or anything else. I brought it forward, was going to bring it forward way before that, um, just because we needed to do the right thing. And sometimes as a council, we have to do the right thing or should do the right thing. I don't believe we did that tonight, but that's my opinion. So having said that, Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Vote. Good night. It's pretty close.